had two things happen to me in high school. One of them um, was that I was injured uh, playing basketball. So basketball is my sport. If you couldn't tell by my frame. You're that, enormous, by the way. Yeah, yeah all of 5'10", you know, <laughs> at the time, probably 145. But, you know, if you couldn't tell, that was my, uh, that was, that, that was my passion nonetheless. Um, so I'm playing that. Oddly enough, I was going for a rebound, which I usually prided myself on avoiding the lane at all costs. But in this particular situation, <laughs> looking back at it, I did uh, go to the lane and then rolled the ankle badly my senior year. So I was super frustrated by that and out for quite a while. So two things occurred to me. One is that the injury happened and then I went through the same story as these guys have told that, um, or that they haven't told there at least. We went through some rehab and I was like, gosh, this could be so much better. I feel like it's not as good. My friend got hurt, hurt at the same time. He went to a different therapist and it was much better. Um, so it's just like, man, there's gotta be a better way. So always, that's my driving force. And the other thing I recognized in that time uh, when I was hurt was that basketball is probably not my future at, at 5'10", 145 at the time. I grew to 165 in college. So that was a huge advantage, but, <laughs> but it was just, it, it just became very apparent to me, but what was, I was great at was science and math and the anatomy and the body just like was so interesting. I just think it's the most incredible machine. I still do to today is how it works and how resilient it can be and how it heals and all of these factors, which is really a passion for me. So nonetheless, um, after high school basketball, I went to the University of Arizona and I was fortunate enough to join uh, Arizona basketball with Lou Olson. And I, I came on as a like practice player manager type role. And one of the great things about Lou is he used us as managers as really in practice and had a lot of interaction. And, and so I did everything from individual workouts to to practicing, to travel, to, to video breakouts and stuff. But one thing that I think that influenced me the most from from high school to college was in high school like we sucked like our team was terrible now granted we played in the bay area and it was tough like we had you know what we played against uh, gary payton's cousin brandon we played against john farnham and go to ucla eddie house who went to asu uh, we had some studs that we were going up against so it was it was tough tough games that we were pretty bad and then going to arizona was like they had just won the national title and for the next five years, we're top five team in the country and won the Pac-10 three times, went back to the national title game in 01. So it was really a, a tremendous amount of success and amount of winning. And that was a big thing that, that shifted for me. It was like really learning how to win and like how to compete at a high level. And I think that that's influenced me to this day. The other thing that was amazing with that is to the level of athletes that I was able to be around. I started to look at it. Like I said, I realized my career was relatively over as far as my future of playing ball in high school, but seeing and being around these guys that were the top guy, and we had, I think I had 13 or 14 teammates that went to the league and, and many of them had 15, 18 year careers. I mean, so many of them still in the league. So it, it's just been tremendous to see this talent and to see like how gifted they were and a, and a few variables. So I'll just tell you one story that I, I think holds true from um, like what we do every day and how it impacts me. And I didn't realize what I was seeing at the time, but looking back now, it's, it's really, really clear. So. We went to the, uh, we were playing in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic, which is in the Garden, Madison Square Garden, which is the mecca of college basketball. So if you have any interest in college basketball, you know what that means. That's that's the creme de la creme. That's it. It's ESPN. You know, Dick Vitale is on the bus with you. He's in the locker room with you. I mean, it's like the real deal. So, you know, we're there and we're ranked. I can't remember what we were, like fifth or sixth in the country. And we're playing against Maryland. And then I think... Um, Florida, Florida was in that tournament. So we had like three top five or six teams in the tournament. Um, so nonetheless, it was a big deal. Uh, really, really big for us. So, you know, I'm hyped going into the bus and going to the garden and you're in New York and the whole thing, right? I mean, if you're not hyped, like something's wrong with you, right? <laughs> and so we're on the bus heading to the garden for game time. And, you know, it's about an hour and a half before the game. And, and I'm kind of looking around on the bus and like most of the dudes who are our best players, like the guys that played in the league, are literally sleeping and they're like had the headphones on just like like out right? headphones weren't cool at this time okay this is before like <laughs> this was before <laughs> beats cords. yeah like they were very man, corded there was right? a disc man as a matter of fact well, after the walk man no 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 this, songs, was, right? this was a disc man situation <laughs> oh wow sorry. before the mp3 period <laughs> apple itunes was not available at this time so i know you have no idea what i'm talking about but nonetheless <laughs> There, yeah, yeah it, was, it was very, yeah, there was, the bus was yellow. I mean, it, was, it was actually a very nice charter situation. But nonetheless, so we get to, we're there and these dudes are all like sleeping on the bus. And I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, this is, this is the, this is it. You know, this is what we play for, you know? And, but what's always interesting is this happened no matter where we played at Staples or at, at the United Center in Chicago. We played in Key Arena in Seattle. 
Um, you know, we've been all over the country playing unbelievable games and throughout the Denzel Bay tournament and the whole deal. And the point is, is that it was really interesting to watch the eliteness of the performers that they could really like control their nervous system and their positioning and say that, Hey, I'm, I'm chilling on the way of the game and I'm not, you know, I'm hyped me, but I'm going to, you know, I contain that energy. But then once you walk into those four lines onto the court, it's like, it's on and you just can't, you can't stay with them. And I think that when we look at what, what's framed for me at this stage in my career as a sports medicine, performance coach, uh, rehab guys, the nervous system and the understanding of how to manipulate the nervous system and the understanding that you have to have as an elite athlete uh, and as a, as a high performing person, how to control your nervous system. And that was a tremendous demonstration looking back at it. Like I was always wondering like, how are these guys doing this? Like, how are you not hyped right now? But they knew exactly when to push and when to pull back. And, and I think mm -hmm. those are ways that you might see, uh, like the question is how does sports influence you, how will you do today? And I learned so much about the elite athlete and how they function and, and, and the amazing things they can do. Of course, the genetic component was obviously pretty staggering as well, but uh, so just, just interesting stuff. And it's, it's pretty powerful. Like I, I just think about how, how different that was. You, know, you should never sell yourself short, by the way. We're going to talk about his field goal percentage. My, da my dad jokes are strong. I'm not going to lie. He's got a ton there. Damn it. My friends at the time were 6'9 to 7'1. So I was definitely on the short side. What do they call an outlet? <laughs>